Man, there has been so many things that have gone on uh, this week. I wanted to bring uh, Carol Roth on. She is the author of The War on Small Business. She is a former investment banker, uh, and she speaks the language of the common man, and she cares more about Main Street than Wall Street. Um, she's here to try to help me make sense of what happened this week. Hi, Carol. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Great to be with you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Happy Friday to you. Okay, so I have several things I want to ask you. So let's see if we can just tick these tick these off here real quick. And then if you want to add something uh, beyond this, I'd love to hear it. Um, we're two quarters now, two quarters of contraction. Uh, they're trying to say that that's that's not a recession. That is a recession, correct? Glenn, I told you and your listeners about this months ago. I predicted this is what's going to happen because the group that is charged with officially declaring re recessions, the National Bureau of Economic Research, or NBER, gives themselves latitude intentionally. Of course they're going to. They can't have political spin. They can't extract a fee. If we can all just look at the data and go, oh, obviously this is a recession. Um, be despite mm. all of that, we all in the financial media, in the economic uh, predicting realm, everybody colloquially agrees that two quarters of economic contraction is a recession. Because if you have something that doesn't have a definition, people can't understand it. There's no way to create any policy around it. You can't just have correct, something that, com that ha completely has no definition. So yes, there is, is latitude. And that is why I predicted, given that latitude, that they would do exactly what they are doing now. Um, so the other thing that happened this week, where so we, we had the announcement we are in a recession, no matter what the White House says. Uh, and then the Fed increased the rate 75 basis points. So we're up to 2.225 or 2.5, right? Yes. Um, uh, and at what point does this become... Uh, a stall of the engine. Do we have any idea at what point it starts to get dangerous? Or are we already there? So if you believe the sort of economic theory that you know 2 percent ish is the neutral rate that if everything expands at 2 percent and the Fed funds rate 2 percent is their target neutral rate, then we're just around neutral right now. And it shouldn't be that much of a concern. Frankly, we had an artificially depressed set of Fed funds rates for a variety of reasons. And so bringing that back to a normalized level isn't that bad to get down the inflation that they have caused, they probably need to bring yeah. it up a little bit more. Uh, but I do think that <laughs> if we start seeing something that has uh, what we fancy people call a four handle on it, where you know it's four percent or higher, um, gets out of the three range, then that's when you're going to start really seeing okay. uh, people freaking out and having a major impact <clears throat> on the economy. But is I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember Volcker, uh, and we had 18, 19% interest rates. And that was just from the inflation that we, we had Jimmy Carter. It was nothing like this inflation. How are we expected to bring inflation down with 2, 4, 5, 10% inflation? Or, I mean, 10% uh, interest rates. Well, here's the reality is that the Fed's tools aren't going to fix some of the issues. I mean, we have a supply and demand imbalance. So unless the Fed can stop printing money and start printing oil and printing food, they're not going to fix those uh, areas. Yeah. The only thing they can do is completely jam up the economy so bad that we're in a massive recession and then you know everybody's sort of hoarding their money. And that's how those supply and demand metrics come together. But they're really focused on the demand side, not the supply side. What we need to be focused on is how do we get more supply in these key areas so that we balance yeah. out that from the supply side, not the demand side. It's a Rudyard Kipling wrote a poem about 100 years ago, and the line that keeps coming to mind was, we had plenty of money, but nothing our money could buy. Um, so help me out. We're trying, we're fighting inflation. We can't do it really effectively like Volcker did because it would just choke us to death. Um, and then Manchin comes in and we change Build Back Better into something called the Inflation Reduction Act. 
How can you spend an additional $700 billion and reduce inflation? I, yeah, this is like, I I might get a little aggro here. This is making me so angry because we were going to throw a parade for Joe Manchin. He was the one that stopped Build Back Broke. He was the one that saved us from even more inflation, taking inflation to hyperinflation. Now, when we're all really happy about that and heaping praise upon him, he is backtracking. And so they're like, we're going to go spend a bunch of money to fight inflation. But the reality is Chuck Schumer came out and he said it. This is Green New Deal light. This is about spending more money on their climate hoax yeah. instead of fighting inflation. He put it out there. It's in a tweet on Twitter that I responded to. They're saying the quiet part out loud. They don't care. This is what they're trying to do. And uh, this is why we have and I'm calling it the Great Recession. So a recession, it, the Great yeah. Recession was from the financial crisis. This is from your wonderful book, The Great Reset. This is the Great Recession. This is in, this is intentional. They are doing this to us on purpose. Yeah, it is incredible that uh, even John Kerry came out and said, we have to do this. We're going to have to spend billions and if not trillions of dollars on this. Uh, and that in the end will be in, uh, anti-inflationary. And it's like that, that, that doesn't even make any sense. That's and worse been, than common core math. And they've been wrong on everything. I mean, these are the people everything. who told us there is no inflation. They told us the way to, to fix crime was to defund the police. They were wrong on COVID. They've been wrong on everything, including the energy transition that's affecting us not only here, but in Europe. And now all of a sudden we're going to say, oh, you're going to know how to do this by spending more money. I mean, it is just basically Congress is just theater and money laundering at this point. So correct me if I'm wrong, historically speaking, Volcker, when he made the tough decision, um, he made the tough decision to hurt the American com- economy, to save the dollar and to save the world's reserve currency. And so we had some credibility. Um, I have been worried ever since uh, TARP that the world is going to despise us because we have we have destroyed the currency which is destroying the economies of everyone in the world so we can not suffer that's what we've been doing and when i heard joe biden say yesterday well inflation but you know there's inflation all over the world i thought yes because they (laughs) hold our dollar are we not causing the inflation in germany and every place else are we not the root of that problem I think the central bankers in Europe and Japan and some other areas can share some of the credit. But here is the amazing thing. And you're so spot on about Volcker. You know, back when we really were this world reserve currency and we had somebody like Volcker who was trying to do the right thing, we had a dilemma, the Triffin dilemma. We've talked about this before, where you have to make a decision. Do you make decisions based on keeping the world currency stable for the world or do you make decisions based on what's right for the United States? Incredibly, we have done neither. We have destroyed the value of the dollar yeah. and the purchasing power here in the U.S. And we've also created a horrible situation for everybody around the world. So nobody's happy. And so, yes, we're having Nobody. an inflationary issue across the world. And now, because of all these other central banks and the strong dollar, we also have a potential debt issue in the emerging markets because all of not only their commodities, but their debt is dollar denominated. Um, last, last thing I have on my list is we had some inflation numbers today, but it's not the CPI, the consumer price index, which is at 9.1, I think it's something else. And I think it is, uh, shoot, I had it written down. The PCE? Uh, what, what it was, employer cost yeah, index, what, what is, I thought it was. Employer cost index is what they're talking about. I don't What is that one? So this is a a subcomponent that's not really one of the core ways that they look at inflation. It's more of an indicator that's stuck in the middle of other indicators. Um, But the ones that we're most focused on are the CPI, which is sort of the one that the headline the consumer is focused on. The one that the Fed is most focused on is the PCE, which is the personal consumption expenditures. Uh, And that's a different read. And no surprise, that's much lower. And hang on, hang on just a second. Uh, That's the one that they're raising the interest rates and doing all these things 
to discourage us from buying things, right? They need us <laughs> to slow down the velocity of money, correct? I mean, I don't know what they're doing because they're trying to get us to, quote unquote, like you said, slow down the velocity of money, slow down our spending, cool demand. But then the government's out, you know, sending money to, you know, everybody spending. in the world and spending more. So I honestly have no idea what they're doing. But yes, theoretically, that that's what they're doing. But the, the PCE number is what the Fed is going to be focused on. It is many percentage points lower than the CPI. So as that comes down, you know, in tandem, you're not going to need to see the CPI at, at three or four for them to feel like they've done what they need to do. And this is the crazy thing. The Wall Street Journal, they every month they go out and they um, interview economists. More than half the economists think by the end of next year that the Fed is going to be cutting rates again. I know so this. This I is read the that. stance. I thought that's yeah. insane. It, it, it is. This is all a game. And they think that they know what they're doing. But the reality of what they're doing is they're creating these boom and bust cycles that benefit the wealthy and wealth connected that wash out the average investor and transfer wealth from Main Street to yes. Wall Street. This is all that they're right. doing. And we have to the, stop it, them. It is amazing. I look at this chip thing that they spent, what, another $250 billion on. That is corporate welfare. So that is taking our tax dollars and giving it to these giant corporations. I saw that and I thought all they're doing right now is impoverishing the little person, the person on Main Street that's paying the taxes. They're making it so we don't have any purchasing power. We don't, we can't. We can't go anywhere because of the gas. We can't do anything. We'll start to lose our houses. We'll start to default on our loans, on our cars. They'll be fine with it. And the government is now saying, I'm your consumer. So you businesses, you do what I say because I'm going to be buying. Isn't that what's happening? Absolutely. is the barbelling of the classes. You're going to have the complete hollowing out of the middle class and the working class. And we've seen this throughout history before. You know, at the late stages of empires, this is what happens, where you get that wealth that's concentrated in fewer and fewer hands, and then you have everybody else who's poor and nobody else is in the middle. And that's exactly was my reaction when I saw this. I mean, not to say that we don't need to compete with China, but these are but very well you lessen companies. the red tape exactly yes, you, you just the lessen tape. the red you tape can... thank you Ugh. thank you but yeah t- they're just giving more corporate welfare and by the way the elizabeth warrens in the world who stand up and say bad corporations they're all going along with this it's bizarro world uh carol thank you so much i really appreciate all your hard work on this and keeping us informed you can follow her on twitter carol j uh, Carol J. S. Roth, or you can go to carolroth.com, and uh, she's a writer and, and uh, working on a new book that I'm very excited about. Uh, you should announce that at some point. Um, <laughs> but uh, she's also, she also writes uh, for um, theblaze.com and uh, is a frequent guest on this program. Thank you so much, Carol. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend, Glenn.